and welcome everybody to the Indie Jigsaw Show. And this month we've got Lynn Dugan is our guest presenter because Marlene has been on holiday. So welcome Lynn and hope you enjoy being part of the show. Good morning or whenever you're listening to it. <laughs> Great to be here. Yeah, I'm looking forward to this. The new experience for me and that's what I'm finding is we're we're, we're kind of marking our path out towards independence. We are having lots of new experiences. We're trying new things. We're being braver. Normally with the Indie Jigsaw Show, we're starting from the perspective that we've won that independence vote and we're looking at what kind of Scotland we want to build. Uh, but this month we thought because the First Minister has made her announcement about the start of the campaign, that now might be a good time to just pause and think, how do we get that moving? How do we make independence look normal? How do we make it look like a, a perspective that's perfectly respectable to hold? And at least half the country do hold that perspective. So we thought we'd have a look at some of the creativity that there is in the S movement and some of the very different ways that you can get involved and increase the visibility of support. Posters in windows or whatever, badges, it all helps. Today we've got our earrings on, haven't we? Heard of the singing revolution in Estonia. We're doing the earring revolution in <laughs> Scotland. So that's what the show's about. Hope you enjoy it. To start us off, um, we're going to show you a short clip of the First Minister making her announcement, and it's called Building a New Scotland, all about how it's perfectly normal to be independent. The thing I really enjoyed about it was the, all the comparisons with all the other countries that are same size as Scotland, don't have half of our resources, and they're all doing better than we are because they're not shackled to the UK. Of course, any case for change starts with an analysis of the status quo, and that is the purpose of the paper we are publishing today. It really isn't difficult to list the many ways in which Westminster governance is currently failing Scotland and holding us back. We have a Prime Minister with no democratic authority in Scotland and no moral authority anywhere in the UK. Brexit has ripped us out of the EU and the single market against our will with massive damage to trade, living standards and public services. Thanks to Brexit, the cost of living crisis is worse here in the UK than in any other G7 country. Inflation in the UK is double that of France. UK growth is now projected by the OECD to be the second lowest in the G20 next year. Only sanctioned Russia will be worse. The end of freedom of movement has left our businesses and public services struggling for workers. It has also robbed young people of opportunity. And to compound all of that, we face the very real risk now of an EU trade war due to the UK government's threat to breach international law over the Northern Ireland Protocol. But this is the very same UK government that negotiated and signed the protocol, a protocol that is actually delivering significant economic benefits to Northern Ireland only adds to the absurdity. In short, the case for Scotland charting our own course, a better course, is strong and compelling. But the evidence we set out today shows that this case does not just rest on recent or temporary developments. In today's paper, we look in detail at 10 comparator countries. Ireland, Switzerland, Norway, Denmark, the Netherlands, Iceland, Sweden, Austria, Belgium and Finland. The evidence is overwhelming that these countries now and over time perform better than the UK. Compared to these countries, many of them smaller or similarly sized to us, Scotland under Westminster control is being held back. With independence, we too would have the levers and the autonomy that these countries take for granted to help fulfil their potential. And let's look at the evidence presented today. Every single one of these comparator countries is wealthier than the UK, and that wealth gap has been maintained over the long term. All of these countries have greater income equality than the UK. Poverty rates are lower in every single one of them, with fewer children 
living in poverty. Most of them have a smaller gender pay gap. All of them have higher social mobility and they have more productive and innovative economies too. All of them have higher productivity. Most of them spend more on research and development. Business investment is higher too. The evidence set out in this paper is clear and it is unambiguous. All of these countries, all of them, are wealthier, fairer and more productive than the UK. And all of these countries, all of them, are independent. First of all, let's have a look at the, the craze that has swept us and certainly maintained all the way through the pandemic was the yes stones. Um, yes stones are little painted stones, sometimes with just a yes on them, sometimes with wonderfully elaborate designs according to what the painters fancy doing. And it has grown into a huge community of people painting and distributing stones. So Lynn, you've been involved from the beginning. Tell us a bit about how it got going. Yep, I've been in for almost the beginning. Uh, I have been painting these stones and giving them to my friends. Um, and one friend said, oh, you do know there's a Facebook page for this? And I was like, no. Um, so this was about September I joined, and I believe it started in July 2018. And it's um, Alison Brown who had started it up. She had been at a stall up in Pitlochry, and they had used stones that they painted with saltires on them to weigh down some of the literature that they had to give out to people. And someone had said, oh, that's a really good idea. Why don't you start a page for that? So that's how the page started. As I say, that was back in July 2018. October 2018, they had a little cairn. And then it kind of developed from there to somebody made a wee sign and had, we had a, laid a saltire on the, the ground and people put their stones on it. People came and took away. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, then we got on to one of the members going, I could build a little cairn for it because I've got loads of bits of wood in my garage. So he put a cairn together. That was Dennis Bell. And that meant it was easier to display because what we found when they were lying on the ground, particularly in um, Oban, where there was oh, a torrential deluge. Um, and again, people were still learning. So some people hadn't actually varnished their slates so there was or stones so there were stones with paint running off them because it really was horrendous rain um it was. but yeah it was a learning experience as you go along you find different things so dennis also built another kind of wall which we called the dry stain dike for putting our, our stones on people would obviously how much do they cost and we're going just make a donation so since we started doing that i mean we, we must have raised a good few thousand pounds since we started doing the collection money it's always gone to a, a local sort of good cause i mean sad that some of the causes are are food banks that in this day and age we have food banks you know and, and baby food banks oh. how horrific is that um it would be better if we didn't have to do it much well. better but that's the big picture isn't it why we're why we're doing all this there are 9.2 thousand people on the page wow. not necessarily all in scotland from from quite far afield as well but yeah um people paint stones as you say it can be a simple saltire on it or yes um plant them out other people find them if, they, if they've written yes stones on the back they can put it on facebook see where they found it and it just encourages other people um to have a conversation about it you know if a child finds it what's this about Mm. parents can discuss it um and i know lots of people are really excited when they when they find them you know they'll share their photographs of it at different uh, locations um yeah and they have gone all over the world you know i've seen some in in new york in new zealand australia great wall of china somebody managed to take one out and put it on the great wall of china so all over the place sometimes you see um doorsteps just randomly with a, with a little scattering of yes stones my doorstep looks like that i know yours does most of the the delivery drivers and come to the door are, are quite clear on my views i said take one if you want so they they take mm. a stone with them and it's just a way of you know you let people know as you say there's people out there that are maybe unsure of 
don't want to say showing your colours, but, you know, they're unsure about it and they're thinking, yeah, I, I do want to be independent. I think it would be better for us. I think more so now when people look at the, the, the absolutely appalling behaviour of mm. Westminster Tories, in particular Boris Johnson, set the example of exactly what not to do as a leader. Um, and people have been completely turned off by that. So it's mm. getting round to people and having those conversations. And even now, I'm still having conversations with people. They say one particular one is how would we have managed furlough if we didn't have mm. Westminster to give us money? It's like but an independent currency creating country just creates its own currency to put out there to get through whatever situation is needed. Most countries run deficits, you know, they haven't borrowed, they've not, they've not gone somewhere else and taken it from somewhere else. It's not like they've gone to China and said, oh, we need money, can you give us money and we'll pay you back? They've not. They have the power to create that currency and that's what they've done. They've put more currency into circulation. You know, if you look at how currency works, you know, what came first, the chicken or the egg? What came first, money or taxes? Because they tell us now that we have to tax so that we can spend money. No, they mm. don't. They, they wouldn't have had anything to tax if they hadn't put money into circulation in the first place. Governments that create currencies put money into circulation. And then you use tax in order to keep control of it, the flow yeah. and not yeah, have yeah. runaway inflation. Yeah, yeah. Well, that was, look where we got onto <laughs> just from talking about stones. <laughs> now, we've just been to a Boulders and Blethers event, which was in Paisley. And this is a get together of people who enjoy making stones. And it was just a delightful, social, relaxed, getting used to being in a room with lots of other people again. There was a really interesting discussion between yourself and Rosalind about signs and symbols and earrings and uh, other things. So let's just have a look at that now. Painting a gnome. <laughs> this is my daily one. <laughs> and that visibility is what we need to do more of, isn't it? Get the badges on, get the get the earrings on. I wear every single day. Yeah. Until we can depend. And you find their conversation starters. Oh, in the people will say, oh, I was at a lunch with friends one time and the uh, waitress came over serving us, lovely young girl, in her javelin, so you think, well, I've got food. She kind of leaned over and said, I I happen to have spare ones in my bag with me. She said, oh, no, she put on a split chip. And we went out for lunch, she were there quite a while. When she came back, I was like, here's a pair of earrings for you. Oh. Well, I, I, I had to see, so I went to up for Mother Day, I was there for hours, and the guy that was seeing the day was Jensen, made some kind of in my bag. And I said, uh, oh, earrings as well. Yeah. I don't suppose you, a man, I don't suppose you wear earrings. I don't know about that, I wear earrings. So I said, well, I have to have some in my bag, and as you're in HS, have them. I probably sell them for paying for a store and yeah. painting, that kind of thing. But I said, hey, I'll just teach you so you can back and give me a yeah. No, it does it just people, it's almost like a little bit of somebody else that thinks the same way. It's yeah. hard to make. Yeah. As it is, yes, we do. And it's non-confrontational yes. as well, it's not, yes. you know. Um, and and nobody being negative about it. No. And only, oh, I like the reading. Yeah. 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 But it is, it's like a little cue, it's a little in there to a yeah. conversation to go further in. It's normalising it as well because half the population. It's giving them, it's giving them the reassurance that they can see. It's yeah. like when it's like when you when you do a bridges painting event and you see cars going past that people will maybe not flash their lights or keep their horns, but they wave to you suddenly uh -huh. from the car and it's just that little. I'm not quite sure to be no. in public about it, but I'm 
here. I'm there. You know what? I'm glad that you were there doing that kind of thing. I think that also proves that all the other should be given about Scotland doesn't support the independence. Yes, actually. No, no, no. If you, see, if you stand on the bridge, you see the number of people that took or weighed more drivers from that with the air horns. And you think, well, and for the odd person that makes a good gesture, you just think, you get some dissonance. Here, yeah, you need to come up here and see this one is being taken. That was a really, really enjoyable event, wasn't it? It's very easy to put something like that together as well. What's involved? What's involved is booking a hall and letting people know where it's going to be, the time and the place. Um, that's really about it. People share ideas on the Facebook page and people are always happy if they see a nice stone can I try that? Yes, by all means, you try it. The more they get out there, the better, especially if someone's come up with a wee clever, you know, either a, an image that's really nice and easy to do or, or a little phrase that's quite catchy. And we mm. always try to be positive. One of the discussions I had recently was, it's not just a solution to independence. And I'm, I'm like, no, it's not, but it's the start of it because then it gives mm. us control to do everything. When I get people telling me that, you know, your education's terrible, your NHS is terrible, we go, well, actually, the Scottish NHS is the best NHS in these islands. Our education system, and I'm not saying it's perfect, um, nothing is perfect, but for what we're working within, we do really well. Um, That's the thing that doesn't make any sense. If they stop to think about it, how could we simultaneously have the best educated workforce in Europe and the worst education system. Those two things just do not match. Yeah, yeah. And we've, we've both got kids who have come through the Scottish education system. They've got degrees, they're, they're studying, they're productive members of society. Basically, if it didn't move, it was painted on. <laughs> and people have come across using slates. That sprung the idea of why could we put a phrase together on mm. different letters? That's how it came about. So, And anybody who's been to marches, any of the All Under One Banner ones, chances are you've seen the, the fabulous display of the Yes Slates. And although it is a lot of work humping them around and they are heavy <laughs> and they're huge and um, they make a fabulous display and they've become a regular feature at um, well the All Under One Banner marches but also um, some other events as well. I'm going to test your memory here Lynn because I've put together some pictures from various events. Let's see if you can remember which each of them were. <laughs> now there's a bit of a clue in that one. <laughs> I wonder. <laughs> Could that be when we went to Fast Lane? <laughs> I think it might. That was a great day, wasn't it? I'm really pleased to see that we're going back to Fast Lane again. It felt like it was important to be there. And that, I think that's a great shot. <laughs> <laughs> and it was a, a reasonable size gathering, considering where we were. There was only a little area that, that people could be in. Did it not occasionally make the hairs on the back of your neck stand up to think how close we were standing to Yeah. You? yeah. Completely. The kind of diversity of people you meet at these rallies mm -hmm. and marches. I've met professors, I've met doctors, you're meeting ex-military and particularly at Fast Lane, met people that had been involved in the movement of, of nuclear um, missiles and submarines around mm -hmm. the place. Um, so they're speaking from personal experience. They're not, they're not speaking from what they read in a newspaper. Mm. They actually lived experience, which is, is, is hugely important. And I think the, the media we've got just now does not necessarily reflect accurately what's, what's going on. They tell us what they want us to hear. Um, Absolutely, yeah. And there's oh. uh, Scottish CND have been um, very generous in share, you know, with their time as, as well as their knowledge. And we've certainly had a couple of good interviews with people from Scottish CND. And even though, you know, in the light of the the war in Ukraine, there have been some people questioning 
Scotland's stance on NATO and those kind of things. And it's it's good that we as a country can have that kind of conversation. But unfortunately, this is where with the mainstream media, we don't get to have those conversations. No. You just get the, the Westminster perspective and everything else is drowned out. Right, let's see if this one's a bit harder. Oh no. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah, so that's down in New Street in Edinburgh. Um, <laughs> we, we, we have a guest visitor there from Bernie Sanders. So what you're seeing there, what we call the mini slates, the large display uh, takes a lot of effort to yeah. move about from place to place. There's three boards that have to be put together to form the stand. The slates themselves, weigh about 10 stone. So what I had done when, when we gathered all the slates from people, I photographed them all and then resized them and printed them out so that they could all be Mod Podge, which is like glued onto like coaster size slates mm. and put the same thing together, but in a small version. So that little display there is about five foot long by a foot and a half tall, so much easier to transport. Okay, let's have a look at the next one. I think that was Bannockburn. This was the one that was, was it not three cross? <laughs> um, three <yeah>. witches. <laughs> well, this is as long in Clackman and when we were trying it out, and the, as you can see by the, the masks on us, it's still very much um, in the pandemic, there was just a chance to get them out. Tina Wilde, who lives down at Gretna, had suggested that why don't we come up with a phrase and all paint a different letter and pull it all together. So that's how the idea came about. Um, We'd done that, I always say from the borders to Bucky, because that's where the, the artists mm. are from all over Scotland. And it's such a fantastic variety of styles as well that people have come up with. I mean, the only kind of guidance they got was make it portrait. Yeah, make the letter obvious. Well, I'm looking at it and thinking I'm wrapped up. We're obviously near the coast. I think that was our broth. That was our broth. Well yeah. done. Um, that's a, perhaps a, nice, a better view of the, the small slate. The mini slate. Well, that's, that's me and my husband, Neil, up at Clackman and Tower. It just shows the variety of places that we've been, and there's far more that we've not covered there. The positivity of the messaging um, is is something that we're very, very proud of, really, that it, it, is, it is inspirational stuff. We've put together a little video with some selection of messages, so we'll play that for you now and see how many of them you, you can spot. do wasn't it then it certainly kept us fit running around putting all the slates out. <laughs> if you'd like to know more about the slate we do have a website now which is yesslates.wordpress.com there's also a facebook group if you're interested in getting more involved in slates you'd maybe like to do a slate yourself get in touch with us at the facebook group and we'll let you know what what we need and if you've got any suggestions for good phrases we've already had a couple of suggestions i think uh, why not independence was a suggestion which i thought was quite good because that ties in with the why not scotland yeah 
ideally using most of the letters we already have. <laughs> yeah, that means we probably need a W and an H. You don't think we have that? Yes. <laughs> but the thing about that is it's good because when we did it initially, there was a people that were involved. We got a group of people and then other people come in and go, oh, I would like to do something for that. So it's great. We'll join in. We, we do need more letters. We're, we're maybe going to need a bigger van to move them about. <laughs> Some volunteers <laughs> to hump them around. We're, we're trying to keep it positive, positive, positive. There's no point in getting into slinging mud back and forth. That doesn't encourage anyone who's thinking, oh, I'm not sure, but maybe I could do that. Yeah, let's show them why we can do it. If countries like Malta can be perfectly self-sufficient, um, independent, why not Scotland? Um, exactly. there's, there's, absolutely, there's absolutely no reason. And if you ask anyone who's against independence to tell you why we should stay in the union and why we benefit from it, they don't. They, they never give us any reasons for that. So they tend to be the sort of angry old man as well. I don't know if it's because they're annoyed that we disagree with them, um, but there is something very aggressive and angry about the union perspective in Scotland, which by and large, and certainly in my experience, the events we go to is not there in the Yes Movement. No. I was just thinking the other day, sitting on a, a train, and I had a little Yes badge on my collar, and they had a little yes badge on their collar and we just sort of went, hello, you know, no idea who it was, but you know, they're my people. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. Well, well, that was kind of like when the Yes Stones page started and you started meeting, meeting people and you were like, oh, I found my tribe, <laughs> other people that paint stones. And to be fair, I mean, my youngest mum says, mum, when, when we're independent, will you stop painting stones? And I went, no. It's an interesting thought, isn't it? When you think of the creativity that's been unleashed in people and a lot of the new skills that, that we've learned, why would we stop <laughs> with that yes vote? And, you know, that's the kind of power you want going into making a new country. One of the arguments that keeps getting thrown up is this ridiculous, they said once in a generation, respect the vote, no means no. Mm -hmm. um, and I watched debate night the other night and there was a young female speaking on it who made the point that well in 2014 i wasn't old enough to vote now i'm old enough to vote and actually since 2014 there's about half a million people who are now eligible to vote that wouldn't vote then and she made the point so do i not get a say does my voice not not count and when you look at that half a million out of a population of five and a half million, you know, it's nearly 10% of the population. So we're saying they have to be ostracized and ignored, but actually it's their future. They've got more of a stake in it than yeah, some yeah. who's 75. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. They're going to have to, to live for far longer with the consequences of any vote. Yeah. Um, so they should, they should have a say. Um, and when you speak to people our age and older and you ask them why they're doing this, a lot of them will say for their children or for their grandchildren, because that, that's exactly the generation that's going to benefit. So let's have a look at some other ways that people can get involved. And I don't know if you're a fan of garden gnomes, but we do also have gnomes of independence. <laughs> Where did they come from, Lynn? <laughs> One of the um, members of Yes Stones had been into, I think it was either like a Poundland or B&M's or Home Bargains and bought little garden gnomes, very basic little garden gnomes, and then started decorating them. And they were amazing. Um, so she would raffle them off at um, rallies for funds to go to a good cause or whatever. So that's how it started. And she'd done quite a lot of them. And then very sadly, not long after the first lockdown, she was diagnosed with cancer and sadly a rare fast growing cancer and died in October um, of 2020. So it's kind of her legacy. So this is Senga Mackay um, that did lots of amazing slates and stones and but also the gnomes. So we now have um, seven of our gnomes, like the, like the seven dwarfs, we have seven of our gnomes that we, we take on wee tours about the place as well. Um, just to 
spread the word in a fun, positive way and get people talking mm -hmm. about it. Kids will run over to see, you know, brightly coloured <laughs> stones and slates and gnomes and then you can start a conversation. Talking of um, learning new skills um, with these gnomes, we're just starting to get ourselves onto TikTok, which is a very difficult new thing for people of certainly my generation. We've been trying to come up with little films to kind of find out how to do it. And one of the ones we put together was The Gnomes using a poem that was, was had you written it, Lynn? Written by Myra Ross. Here we've got a tiny little video <laughs> with The Gnomes and the poem. And there's some very talented painters and photographers and artists also involved in the Yes Movement who, again, very generously share their work, bring it to marches and things. Neil has been gathering a, a selection of this artwork. Let's have a look at some of the examples of the, the indie art. And if, again, if anybody would like to see more of these, if you have a look on the Yes Slates website that we told you about a minute ago, there's a whole section on other indie art. So you'll, you'll see it there, which will also tell you who the artists are. On the left, the picture with Wallace Monument and the stag has been done by Jim Large. And again, we, we met through being at Marches and on the Facebook page, and you get to know a little bit about people. Jim worked in, in kind of advertising, um, creating the, the kind of graphics to go along with it as well. And you look at that and you think, oh, that's amazing. I bet that took you hours. And, <laughs> and Jim will say, oh, no, I knocked that out in about 20 minutes. And then on the right, the, the tree uh, has been done by Lynn Miller. And I met Lynn because Lynn was also involved in, in doing the, uh, the slates. And she has so many brilliant creative ideas you know and that actually you don't you don't know if you just see it for the picture but the heart's actually stuck on so it's a little heart that's painted oh, like that it? yeah and and the, the amount of time and effort and the, the detail that goes into the trees leaves are all made out of little love hearts it's all just so positive these are both by lynn as well i love that uh, blue one with the stag it's just so dreamy and again yeah. hopeful yeah. And, and, the, and the colors are nice and then the one with the butterfly i think is being done with the the pouring paints. I mean, I love blues anyway, but that's just just gorgeous. Oh. Um, oh. Now these, I think, were I think one's Leslie Sinclair, the the, the Free Scotland. She's obviously been cutting up a newspaper <laughs> to make that, which just shows you the different techniques people can use. Because people say I'm not arty. Um, but yeah, you can you can cut up other things and you can put them together. You don't physically have to to draw. It's you know um, lots of different ways of doing things. And on the left, I believe is Carol Thompson. Yeah, Carol Thompson. Um, yeah, and she's got a wee poem there. Is it a McDermott poem or a writing from poem Hugh McDermott and the wee white rose of Scotland there. Um, mm. A lovely motif, isn't it? Yeah. Now, well, group these know. three together because they were the same shape, but uh, three different <laughs> artists. Yes. So on the left is Louise Swanson, and these are little wooden coasters that Louise has painted on with different images, and then they were they've been put together in that little um, display. The middle one is is one by me. Um, mm -hmm. And the, the kind of unicorn, I have been sent a postcard and borrowed that idea from. Um, I've used different colours to what they've used. 
But on that slate is a little poem that I wrote as well called The Unicorn and Me. And then on the right are three, I think these are little coasters, like slate coasters. So these have been done by Richard Prow, and they're lovely as well. I love the way he he puts things together, the little stick people that he uses and the, the real kind of like splashes of, of colour across it. Um, you know, just just fantastic. He'll always have his wee spider in somewhere. Um, you'll see it on the top slate and on the bottom oh, slate. Yeah. He's got a little spider on the web there. These are the uh, amazing creations of Rachel McKenzie. And the... The one on the left is a, is a print of a slate that um, Rachel's done, and it's just got lots of the different things that we have in Scotland that we've done over the years. Whether it's the kelpies and the you know the Falkirk wheel, uh, the new bridge, how much of the the, the, fi the fish fishing grounds that we have, the oil in the all the oil in the North Sea, much as we're trying to get away from using um, fossil fuels. Um, you think Visit Scotland or some organisation like that would snap up this kind of work because it, it just is such a, a positive vision. I know she's put it on t-shirts as well, hasn't she? She's yeah, printed yeah. it. Yeah. I mean, it is a, it's really clever. It's just looking at all this. So there's a wee red squirrel, but you know, the Highland cows, all these kind of iconic things. I think there's eagles there as well. I, I do see a wee distillery, I think, in the middle of it. <laughs> Scotland has a huge whiskey industry. The one on the, the right one, is just beautiful, yeah. isn't it? Mm. It's kind of, you know, it's like it's almost kind of Pictish art, but I, I love her, yes. the colours that she uses. But when we got this one, I said, Oh, it's a hair hair. And she's like, What do you mean? And I said, If you look closely, there's actually a hair that has been varnished into it. Now, Rachel, I know, has got, has got collie dogs. So. It's clearly a collie dog hair, so we call that the hair hair. <laughs> <laughs> Fabulous, the detail, the secrets that you don't know about until it gets yeah. shared. Um, and these, I, I think the combination of the photograph and picking out the saltar is wonderful. Yeah, and so that's Richard Prowse, the artwork on the right and the photography on the left. Um, and that was the that was the Yes Bikers in Oban in 2019. Um, and that was, uh, apart from the deluge of rain, that was a, a fantastic, it only lasted something like 15 minutes, but that was long enough to get soaked to the skin. Um, but that was, that, was a, that was a great march. Um, and I think what's really important about the, you, you know, going to smaller places, yeah, it's great in, in Glasgow and Edinburgh, um, pre-pandemic when we had huge volumes of people coming along there, huge numbers of people. Um, but for smaller places, it's important for them to see this it, movement is alive and well. That kind of leads us on almost to the the most recent marches. Um, Dumfries, again, going a place that I actually I'd never been. <laughs> it was lovely to, to go there anyway. But um, a part of the country that has got issues, borders was um, a lot of the the issues which we, we must feature in a, an upcoming show. We'll have a closer look at borders. I met a, a lady there who had a really positive take on borders and, and the opportunities that borders present and uh, how we actually would have the best of both worlds. So we've got a little bit of clip from the just the Dumfries march as well, which wasn't a huge march, but what they, um, they made up for it in enthusiasm. And uh, it was a very positive, very uplifting occasion.
I'm, I'm kind of hoping now that the kind of the starting gun has been fired, that mm. people are going to come back in. But people are still wary, and the pandemic's not gone away just That's because they're true. reporting on it all the time. I mean, at the weekend, looking at figures, and you can still get figures if you go and look at it, um, or go and look for them. One in thirty has COVID. Yeah. And no. I don't know how they're measuring that because nobody's doing tests anymore. So, yeah. Well, that I mean, that could well be a thing. That this undeniably, the the marches are not the size that we saw before. Although I think the marches before the really big ones, that was really aimed at at convincing the Scottish government that we were serious about wanting another referendum as much as anything else. And the 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 effect of the pandemic has obviously been to to make people understandably wary about gathering even outdoors and it's only now that we're starting to see people coming back and as you say the, the covid is still around i mean just because we're most of us are vaccinated doesn't mean that it's not a you know a debilitating disease with who knows what consequences so we kind of get that that, that people are wary. If you want to take part in something that's to do with the Yes Movement, if you want to be visible, coming on a march is one of the easiest and most fun ways of getting involved. And it is outside. So if you are at all wary still about the pandemic, being outside is you know, the best place for it. And there's absolutely no problem at all. If you want to wear a mask, I mean, a lot of us still do. And by the fact that we're outside, you can be as close to or as far away from people as you like. Yeah. You don't necessarily have to do the march. You can find out where the end point is and you can go along there. And, you know, there's always stalls and it's not necessarily, you know, getting money off you. The, the, the Indie Cafe runs, so that's there to give, give people, you know, you're going to need a wee refreshment once you've done your, your march. Some of the marches have been quite long. I mean, in Glasgow, when you marched from Kelvin Grove to Glasgow Green. I think it was over three miles. The Bannockburn one, I think, is even longer. And that's uh, by the time this show goes out, we will have done the Bannockburn march. Yeah. Now that people know we've got an indie ref, we've got a a month for it anyway, if not a, a specific date for it. That it is. It's it's game on. We need to start yeah. now. And it's winning hearts and minds. It's not fear mongering. Mm -hmm. That's why I know behaved before promises that they they failed to keep and I, and I think they're going to try with the same promises again well I'm sorry once bitten twice shy for a lot of people that yeah. we can see already they're still doing the same project fear stuff and a, a lot of quite lazy um <laughs> think questions that are being asked about things that we've already long since put to bed you know the, the Spanish won't let you join the EU nonsense and it kind of encourages me a little that if they haven't bothered updating their project fear, then it's not going to be as effective this time well, round. Exactly. Because all the things they said that would happen if we were independent have happened That's under Westminster right. Tories. And that's exactly it, isn't it? We, we know exactly the effect of a no vote so okay it's a little bit of a leap of faith to vote yes but we know what no meant i mean even even people who voted no last time round there's a lot of people now saying oh well actually i've changed my mind what you're saying there lynn about now that the starting gun's been fired well the weekend after the first minister's announcement there was a whole eruption of bridges for indie events um, and from lots of different groups and we've got some photos of, of some of those that we've collected and a little bit of footage if you've not been on a bridges for indie event here's a little bit of footage that shows you what it sounds like <laughs> a 
so we've done a few, haven't we, Lynn? We're very, uh, very much very enjoyable. <laughs> yeah, they are, and uh, and you know, if you're feeling a wee bit um, down in the dumps or a bit, you know, when are we getting independence? You know, and I feel for people that have been doing this for way longer than I've been doing. Um, but I think, oh, you know, please, can we get in my lifetime? And then there's people a lot older than me. They're saying in my lifetime. But you go, you stand on a bridge with your array of different flags and you get people driving underneath and you'll get indications from them, toots, waves, flashing of lights, the occasional rude gesture who we just wave to anyway. Um, wish them all the best because they clearly, you know, are <laughs> wish they could come up, come up and, and see and hear what we see and hear when you're standing on the bridge. And I think as well, it's about that visibility. Absolutely. People that are driving past, so you stand on a bridge for an hour, you'll get traffic going under. And these are people who may be unsure, but thinking, I do want independence, but I'm not sure if, if everybody else isn't going to be going for it, then well, I, I'm going to be a better not. And then they see that, now there are people out there and they'll hear other cars tooting as they go past as well. And I, I like the wee, when you get a wave from somebody that's, they, they, don't, they don't want to do a grand, like open gesture, but you get a wee wave from behind the steering wheel <laughs> in the passenger seat. Um, yeah. Particularly if you're a yes supporter and you're not, you feel as if you're a bit on your own as well. There's nothing gives you a lift, like seeing a bridge that you go under. I went down to visit my mother in Hartlepool and the last bridge before you get to the border there was just a sea of flags and it just lifted me. I had a, a very similar experience going down to visit my brother who lives in Carlisle um, and again the last bridge before <laughs> getting to the border and, and I was so excited I'm peeping and I'm waving and you know the, you know the people up on the bridge were waving back at me and I thought oh yeah yeah you know that we're out there, you know. Um, and you just like to think that maybe peace, some of the people in the cars are perhaps having a conversation that they otherwise wouldn't have had. Lots of spin-offs, but it's great fun. That actually is a whole load of ideas that we've just uh, run round in the, the, the hour or so that we've been chatting. And all of them are very accessible and there will be a whole load of others that we've not even touched on. We know there's cartoonists out there, photographers, poets, musicians, poets, definitely <laughs> poets, musicians, huge amount of, of India. In fact, we'll maybe have to do a some kind of poetry special at some point. I hope you enjoyed that and hope you've either got some ideas of things to try or things you want to share with us. If you're doing something that you think would be great for us to cover, get in touch, let us know. Don't forget to have a look at the website. Um, if you're on TikTok, it'd be lovely if you could give us a follow. We're just learning that. Um, so it'd be nice to have some encouragement there. And I think the last thing we just wanted to close with, um, Lynn said something about wanting independence in her lifetime. And unfortunately, there are quite a lot of YES members who haven't achieved that. But we do have some slates of remembrance. And we're just going to finish the show with showing these. For those who haven't made it, um, we're standing on their shoulders and do you want to tell us about these Lynn? Yes, yeah, so this slide on the on the right has been done by Beth Straker and she's got her tree covered in hearts and the names of, of people who've sadly passed away prior to independence um, and the slate on the left is one that I did and with a wee poem on it and in the back of the slate we've got the names of people and um, and, and sadly, still at events that I go to, other people are saying, oh, can you add this name now? So to make sure um, our names don't end up on there. Yeah. Right? <laughs> exactly, exactly. But I think it's nice, you know, as you say, we're, we're, we're standing on the on the shoulders of these people who have dedicated lots of their, their time for this cause because they recognised how important it is. Um, so. And un unnamed hundreds and thousands over the last 300 yeah. years you know so this is the fact that we're finally the generation that might be able to swing it is um is quite something that's quite a responsibility isn't it i think that's lovely just to see those um have those little remembrances there so those are generally on display as well aren't they at, at marches and things 
Yes, we take them along and, and put them on with the with the with the yes yeah. links display. Um, because as I say, we we occasionally still sadly get another another name or two to yeah. uh, to add on to it. Um, but I think it's nice that these people are remembered for for, for their their time and their dedication. Um, absolutely, absolutely. So, just in the spirit of of remembrance, we're going to dedicate this episode to Senga Mackay whose beautiful work we've we've seen quite a bit of as we've gone through this show, but uh, fondly remembered by by everybody who knew her. Definitely, yeah. yeah. She was she was a she was a real stalwart in the in the Yes Stones movement. Um, very positive about independence and how important it is for Scotland. Um, so, yeah. yeah. So we're going to use all this as inspiration to redouble our efforts and get out there and get this campaign moving. And we'd love it if everybody out there let us know what you're doing. And if you think this kind of um, summary of activity is is uh, is enjoyable and useful, then let us know and we'll we'll do more of it. And thank you very much to my guest presenter, Lynn. Marlene will be back as normal for the next show. Well, I'm sure we'll maybe uh, call on your services again, Lynn. So thank you very much for joining yeah, us today. You're welcome. Thank you. It's been lovely chatting. <laughs> nice, nice seeing all the artwork.